A very good evening, live from Old Trafford. A very warm welcome to Granada Reports. This is a milestone tonight for women's sport as the Euros hit town. Breaking new records, how England's lionesses are ready to inspire a whole new generation of football stars. I feel like now you see the lionesses and you see people in the WSL, you feel like anything's possible. One to watch, Ella Toon's already Manchester United's top scorer. Now she has international goals in her sights. And I'll also be talking live to some special guests. And in the rest of the day's news. The town's MPs think Boris Johnson should resign, so what do the people of Southport think should happen next? Happy 50th birthday. We'll delve into the archives and look forward to the future of Blackpool Zoo. And Teddy does not look super impressed with those strong and gusty winds for July today. Hopefully he looks a bit happier tomorrow. It does look a bit better. Full forecast a little later on. So, as we go on air this evening, we're hearing the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is under massive pressure to resign. That pressure's increased after a whole raft of government ministers quit their jobs this afternoon, with senior members of the Cabinet also advising Mr Johnson that his position is no longer tenable. We'll be hearing what some of our region's Conservative MPs are saying and getting reaction from the town of Southport, whose previously loyal MP has turned against Mr Johnson. We've got all of that coming up very soon, and of course there'll be more on the ITV News at 6.30. But first, we're rejoining Lucy at Old Trafford. Lucy. Yeah, thanks, Kamal. Tonight is the night, the night that proves just how far women's football has come. The women's Euros, delayed for a year by the pandemic, this is the night so many people have waited so very, very long to see. A night to inspire the young footballers of the future. The fun here has already started and in just under two hours now, England's Lionesses will face Austria. Those are the Austrians there in front of a crowd of 75,000 at Old Trafford. It is a sellout and with that home crowd roaring them on, many are predicting this is their year as our sports correspondent Mike Hall reports. The scene is set. The Lionesses are ready to roar. It's the first time in 17 years that England has hosted the Women's Euros, and this one will be the biggest to date. 16 teams, 31 matches, one champion. A month of football with the potential to unite a nation and inspire millions. It's crazy. Um, obviously, we know that all our group games uh, are sold out um, so I think you know the level of excitement and the want to come and watch women's football is, is growing. In previous tournaments sometimes you don't get to see kind of what people back home are feeling but now that it's a chance of a, a home Euros and obviously all the fans being able to come to the games it's going to be such an exciting tournament. And the North West can look forward to playing a major role. Half of the England squad play their football here, while venues like Old Trafford and Manchester City's Academy Stadium will welcome sellout crowds and visitors from across the continent. But it's not just the big cities that are seeing all the action. No venue in the country is hosting more games than Lee Sports Village. This place is the home of Manchester United women and it's staging four matches in total, including a quarter-final tie. It's so exciting, it's really here now. And as you can see, our team are busy working away, the pitch is to perfection, all the brand is going up, the tournament's here and we're so excited. This is such a massive deal for this venue, isn't it? Oh, it's great. Uh, it puts Lee Sports Village on, on the map on the international stage. I think it's special. I, I certainly do. I think uh, as far as the, the Borough of Wigan and the town of Lee, it's certainly something special. It's, it's, a, it's something that will create memories, but it also gives us a chance to showcase the facility we have here at Lee and, and also the Borough itself. The stadiums will be packed and so too the fan parks, like this one here in Manchester's Piccadilly Gardens, where those not lucky enough to have tickets will be able to watch every match on the big screen. Push each other along when he gets tough and he will get tough. 
Amanda Barr played for England in the last home Euros back in 2005, paving the way for the next generation. At her coaching school in Stockport, she tells youngsters to chase their dreams. When I first started um, to play for England, we were probably about 10 years of, um, behind the other countries, so we had a lot of catching up to do. Um, 2005, we'd picked up a lot of that ground. Um, but if we, again, if we are being honest, um, we were still slightly behind some of the bigger countries. Actually, now um, I would like to say that we are definitely up, up there with, with the best with the best countries. Back then, I feel like you'd have looked at the men's teams and thought, well, we can't do that because obviously uh, women didn't have the privilege. But I feel like now you see the lionesses and you see people in the WSL, you feel like anything's possible. I'm really excited because it's right near us and yeah, it's brilliant really. I'm a ball assistant for four of the games at. Uh, Lee Sports Village so I get to be part of the opening ceremony as well. Everything about football is just even when I touch the ball I think it's like it's just really fun and joyful. There are few things that lift the spirits of a nation quite like a major football tournament. Last summer England's men sparked scenes of euphoria on their way to the final of the Euros. If the Lionesses can repeat that or even better it we're in for quite a summer. Mike Hall, ITV News. Well, they're a noisy lot here tonight and there are loads of messages coming in to us from you at home showing support for England. Uh, like this one from Aaron Lee. He's a firefighter in Manchester. He says, I am absolutely supporting them 100%. Bring it home, Lionesses. Uh, he goes on, this tournament works perfectly starting at the end of the season for the men's game. As we're all missing football, myself included, we will be chomping at the bit to see this game and they will do us proud. Well, for one of those players, tonight is extra special because it is at Old Trafford. As a little girl and a Manchester United fan, well, she always dreamed of playing for England here. So, imagine how proud you would feel tonight if you were the person who taught Ella Toon PE at school. David Chisnell has been chatting to both of them. Toon, let's fly. Oh, 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 that is class, you have to say, from Ella Toon. Ella Toon is a rising star of women's football shining brightly for both club and country. The Manchester United midfielder is a lifelong United supporter and tonight at the Theatre of Dreams, the 22-year-old from Tildesley could achieve her ultimate dream by playing for England in front of a sellout crowd of 75,000 fans at Old Trafford. So special, growing up supporting Manchester United and going to games at Old Trafford, for it to be the opening game of our Euros um, is something special and it'll be a massive occasion for us. Is this what you'd always dreamed about as well? Yeah and no, I never thought we'd we'd be able to sell out Old Trafford and, and play for England in, our, in the Euros. But yeah, obviously I've dreamed of, of playing for England, I've dreamed of playing at Old Trafford, so now the two together, uh, it's a special moment. And of course, being a local player as well, you're going to have loads of support there as well, aren't you, from, from Tilsley? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, a lot of uh, the Tilsley lot have messaged me saying that they come in and Obviously, I've got a massive family as well, so we've got two boxes, 16 tickets. So, yeah, it's been a bit mad, but, um, yeah, I'll have everyone there supporting me, which is really special. Two driving forward and going for it. So well, Ella's journey to the top began at United's Academy, but after seven years there and with no women's team at the club, she left to join Blackburn and Manchester City. Yeah, it was really difficult at the time because all I ever wanted to do was play for Manchester United. Um, and to be there for so long and to have nothing to look up to, it was it was difficult. And yeah, always moving clubs is, is tough um, at such a young age as well. But it was amazing to, to move clubs and to, to be around different girls and to make new friends. Um, but then for Manchester United to finally start that women's team, it was a no-brainer for me to come back home. And yeah, I've never looked back since. After signing for United's newly formed women's team in 2018, Ella has now gone on to become their all-time record goal scorer. Wherever she's played, her career has always been carefully followed at her school, where she's inspiring the next generation of pupils and players. How much of an inspiration is she to you? Massive. In Tilsley, it's not really a well-known place, so it's a big deal that Ella is playing for Man United now. And England. And England, yeah. <laughs> it's massive because to have someone as good as her come to my school, it's brilliant because it's just inspirational. I want to be like her when I'm older, so the best way to learn is from learn from the best. And yeah, I think she, we're going to win against Austria in the Euros on Wednesday. She going to score? 
definitely. So proud. She's a great, great girl. And myself, the PE department, and everyone at Fred Long, we're so, so proud of her. We could burst. Good luck, Good morning, Ella. How does that fit for you? Like I say, being a role model, having people look up to you, having people say, oh, when I grow up, I want to be like Ella too. It's crazy. I hear that sometimes and I think, wow, but that's what I want to be. I want to be the role model for young girls now because I think when I was growing up, it wasn't as easy as knowing who the senior lionesses were and having those to look up to. So, yeah, for us now, it's massive and we've been a part of the growth of the game and we want to keep, we want to keep it growing. Well, Ella's success is showcased on the school corridor where her achievements sit proudly alongside those of her childhood friend and Olympic 800 metres silver medalist, Keely Hodgkinson. Of course, the school's got quite the sporting pedigree because not only you, it's also Keely Hodgkinson as well, isn't there? Yeah, not bad, that is it. <laughs> Two girls from Fred Longworth living the dream. But yeah, obviously Keely's a friend of mine and I've seen all the hard work that she's put in over the years as well. So uh, she's doing amazing and I'm, I'm very proud of her. Back he goes to two, that trick. What would it mean to win the Euros? Everything. Um, but I think the main thing for us is making the nation proud and, and being role models to all the young girls and boys looking up to us. Um, so yeah, we just want to go out there and, and uh, enjoy our football. Yeah, what a night. The crowd here really getting in the mood now. I'm not sure about the football, but there's some very neat footwork going on here in the crowd. Bit of dancing going on. Uh, it really is fantastic. Uh, later, I'll be talking to the sister of Nikita Paris, who's playing tonight for the Lionesses, of course. But that's it for now. It is fair to say it's a big news day elsewhere. So let's get back for the latest from Gamal. Yeah, Lacey, many thanks indeed. It certainly is a big news day. There have been more than 30 resignations from Boris Johnson's government in the last few hours. But as of now, the Prime Minister is still clinging to his job. Uh, that's a live shot of uh, 10 Downing Street. If anything happens, it's likely it'll happen there. Uh, of course, we've been talking to our region's MPs all day to see if they think the Prime Minister should go or whether he should stay. One of them was Damien Moore, the MP for Southport, uh, who was quite clear in his view that Mr Johnson should resign after a series of blunders. We'll be talking to our political correspondent, Leisha Minnelli, in a moment. But first, Anne O'Connor went to Southport to see if people there agreed with their MP. Boris Johnson's used to being barracked by journalists. It's all over, Prime Minister. But as he made his way to Prime Minister's questions, his own MPs were joining in. Bolton North's Mark Logan resigned as the Parliamentary Private Secretary in the Northern Ireland Department, saying there is only so much anyone can expect my constituents to accept or ignore. It's out of respect for them, he says, that I come to this decision. They deserve more from leadership. Simon Fell, the member for Barrow, tweeted, Enough is enough. And Damien Moore, Merseyside's only Conservative MP, said the PM must resign, saying he's learnt nothing from his past mistakes. On Lord Street, in his Southport constituency, many share the mood. There's no way he'll, he'll do the honourable thing and go, because he just wants to cling on to power. I mean, that's all he is. He's, 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 he's a total liar. That's all he does. He doesn't know how to run a country, broke all of his own rules, and then made us all look like idiots, even though he wasn't doing it either. So I think he should resign forever. What about you? Exactly the same, yeah. Get rid of him. I think he's uh, had too many chances now, to, and he's... he's... It's, uh, you know, it's just not working. Current situation at the moment, what he's done, and everything is, has been a catastrophe. The lies, mistrust, mismanagement. What about you? Same. Same. What do you, what do you think of him? <laughs> well, I voted for him in the first place, and I thought he might make a go of it and Brexit and all the rest of it, but... Would you vote for him again? No. But for some, the issue is splitting households. And you think he should we carry should on? let him get on with what he's doing, because he's doing a good job. But you don't. <laughs> no. You but disagree that's... with your partner? <laughs> yeah, he does yeah. disagree. We do disagree now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Stephen Hesketh is a hotelier in Liverpool, hoping to become a Conservative councillor in Chester. He believes Boris Johnson was an asset, but no more. As an individual, great personality, etc. 
but actually we've got to have trust in our politicians and I think he has lost that trust. The Prime Minister remains. The resignations continue. Anne O'Connor, ITV News, Southport. Uh, so that is a view from uh, Southport. Uh, let's go to uh, Leisha, who's at uh, Westminster for us this evening. And uh, Leisha, uh, all eyes are now on our region's Conservative MP, some of whom owe their jobs to Boris Johnson, I think it is fair to say. Uh, this is moving extremely quickly. Honestly, days of political high drama don't get more turbulent than this. The usual chorus of support behind Boris Johnson during Prime Minister's questions fell silent today, a silence his ministers heard loud and clear. And as those resignations ramped up, the MP for Crewe and Nantwich and one-time supporter of the Prime Minister, Dr Kieran Mullen, told me that really the only way forward now is for Boris Johnson to hold up his hands and go. It's with, with great regret. But I think ultimately the Prime Minister has got to realise now that, that, that running this country and delivering is not something he's in a position to do anymore. He doesn't have the support of, of the MPs that he needs. If you want to stay in post, you need to govern with the kind of ethics and high standards that the public expect. So what on earth happens now? Well, with 34 ministerial resignations in less than 24 hours, the Prime Minister could run out of backbenchers to promote into government positions, something he was asked about this afternoon when he appeared before the Liaison Committee and was subjected to some really forensic questioning by the MP for Hazel Grove, William Ragg. At which point does it become impossible for the Queen's government to be continued? Uh, I, 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 I really think that, uh, you know, the, uh, you're... William, you're underestimating the, the, the talent, energy uh, and sheer ambition mm. of, uh, of, of, of members of parliament. And they want to get things done. They want to get things done uh, for their constituents. And uh, the, go the government of the country is being carried on uh, with ever-increasing uh, energy. Ambition, could that not be considered delusion at times? And there was also a really extraordinary moment in that exchange where the Prime Minister seemed to suggest he'd call a general election rather than be outed by rebellious MPs. This is constitutionally turbulent stuff and means that once again all eyes are back on the MP for Altrincham and Sale West, Sir Graham Brady, chair of the now all-important 1922 Committee of Backbenchers. A man who's reportedly with the Prime Minister right now offering what's euphemistically known as wise counsel, effectively telling him that the jig is up. Now the Prime Minister doesn't have to listen to him him, but if he doesn't, the 1922 have another card to play. It was a month ago that they announced that vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister, which he won and traditionally wouldn't face another such vote for at least another year. But today, the 1922 confirmed they're holding their own elections on Monday to reselect the 18 backbenchers who sit on their executive. If all 18 of those are against the Prime Minister, a new vote of no confidence is virtually inevitable. They'll simply change the rules in order to allow it. Now, Boris Johnson's spokesperson says he believes he has enough support to win that vote. That's not the impression I'm getting from the Northwest Conservatives I've spoken to tonight. And ultimately, he does have that majority of 80, and it doesn't really feel like it right now. Okay, Leisure, an extremely busy day for you. The evening is going to be uh, very similar, I am uh, guessing. Um, okay, let's move on to more of our region's news and potentially more problems for people flying from Manchester Airport. Holidaymakers on late night and early morning flights over the next few weeks have been asked to leave extra time for their journeys because of overnight work on a busy section of the M56 motorway. The eastbound carriageway west of the airport is going to be shut at night apart from weekends between Thursday the 14th of July and Friday the 5th of August. It's because of an £85 million upgrade between Junction 6 at Hale Barnes and Junction 8 at Bowdoin. Well, next, it's a special day on the Lancashire coast at Blackpool Zoo. It is 50 years old today, so a very happy birthday to the zoo. It's open every day but Christmas, uh, has half a million visitors a year, and precisely 3,543 people attended the launch in the pouring rain half a century ago. Our entertainment correspondent, Caroline Whitmore, went to see how much the zoo's changed in all that time. Well, Blackpool Zoo sits on 37 acres of land and is home to 1,176 animals. They first opened their gates back on the 6th of July 1972. That's half a century ago. Carl had 50 years ago the launch. 
Johnny Morris. They rode in on an elephant. That wouldn't happen now, would it? No, th times have changed. I mean, of course, um, elephants are big animals. You know, they, they can be very unpredictable and dangerous. And, you know, health and safety is something that didn't really exist in those times. <laughs> and also our understanding of how we look after animals is very different as well. It's not something that we do in zoos now is, is ride elephants. It's really changed. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse bless you. you. <laughs> um, the sea she lions. agrees with you. That's all she's saying. <laughs> the main center if you will coming from the main cafe down here towards the sea lions believe it or not was the original runway so when it was a military air base during the second world war and it was a, a, a training center for the parachute regiment that was the, the runway the sea lion pool behind me was one of the first enclosures of the zoo talking to some of the zookeepers when I started in 1997 I believe it was actually designed for dolphins dolphins never came there's, there's well over 50 baby sea lions born here at Blackpool Zoo during that 50 year period and they've been sent across to zoos uh, all over the UK and Europe Gina here being one of them Gina our oldest animal is Kate. She's our Asian elephant. She's been here since the zoo opened. She's you know in her early 50s now. She's in a fantastic uh, enclosure that we, we built just a couple of years ago. I've been visiting her since my mum brought me and my brother when I was a baby. She's an iconic animal here at the zoo. We've seen lots of change, haven't we, here at the zoo? We have, yeah, and this is just one of them, the fact we have this facility to be able to do this, to be able to get close to our animals, <laughs> interact with them, learn more about them. And it, it, this really brings education to life and it brings the animals to life as well for our visitors. So many animals, they're facing so many different threats in the wild from a, a number of different things, mainly from habitat loss. But the, the breeding programs we have, not just in our zoos, but in zoos all around the country, they really secure that population for future generations. Recently, we have welcomed a new male orangutan and he's part of a breeding program that's important. Borneo orangutans are endangered in the wild. They face a number of different threats. So by him coming to breed here at Blackpool Zoo with our females, once again, it's securing that population. There's some interesting facts about Blackpool Zoo. We're on an interesting site. There's lots of history involved in it, but ultimately it is about the animals. And very importantly, education, conservation, research, that has very much come to the forefront of what zoos are offering. These animals are ambassadors of our zoo, especially a, a key species like this. He's like, give me, <laughs> give me me food. And like, as you can see, they bring learning to life. <laughs> Let's hope, fingers crossed, that our furry friends are here for us to visit for another 50 years. Yes, fingers crossed, you know, and hopefully I'll be here, maybe not for the next 50 years, <laughs> but for as long as I'm physically able to, you know, I, I love the zoo, it's, it's, it's my life. Happy anniversary at Blackpool Zoo, and what do you think of all this, uh, Gina? 50 years? Oh, yes. Oh, well done. Well, as Carl said, uh, here to the next uh, 50 years. Well done to everyone at uh, Black Bull Zoo. Uh, that is it for me. Back to Lucy at Old Travis and the build up to the women's Euros. Uh, uh, good night for now. Hey, Lucy. Gamal, thanks very much. Yeah, welcome back to Old Trafford. What a night. Proof of how far women's football has come. Uh, Bernadette O'Connor in Wigan has been in touch to say good luck to the Lionesses. What a great distraction from all that chaos in Downing Street. Have a great tournament, she says. So, the crowds are here, the countdown is on for England's Lionesses to take on Austria in front of that record crowd. In that crowd, you might hear one person cheering louder than anyone else. She is Kelsey Paris from Toxteth. Her twin sister, Nikita Paris, is playing for England tonight. Also joining us, Amanda Barr, who we saw in Mike's report earlier. Thanks for coming along and battling against the noise for us. Uh, so what is it like for you to see a crowd like this, Amanda? Yeah, a little bit different really to see it from this side because as a player, actually, you don't get to see none of this. You sneak in through the back into the stadium. So you don't get time um, or a chance really to see all this. So to see it from the other side, absolutely fantastic. And how much have things changed since you were playing? I mean, I know that when I played in 2005, we as a country had made a lot of progress up to that point. Um, from then till now, um, again, made so much progress and, and these girls are in a real, real good position this evening, that's for sure. Well, it's incredible to think we're at Old Trafford because Manchester United didn't even have a women's team until quite recently. Yeah, that's correct. Many years without a women's team. Um, I think they finally did and have managed to get one going, which is fantastic. But for many years, um, never had a team. And so to be here tonight, again, absolutely fantastic for the girls. Brilliant. Amanda, thank you so much. Well, Kelsey... 
your twin sister is actually playing out there. When was the last time you spoke to her? Um, the last time I spoke to her was this morning. Um, just like wishing her good luck and just telling her to give everything she's got, which I'm sure she will, as always. And how was she? She was um, really excited. She can't wait just as much as we can't wait. So, And that's her twin. When she gets nervous, do you get nervous? Um, yeah, I get extremely nervous right now. I'm shaking. I've got butterflies. But um, I think if I calm down, she'll be calm. So we're moving. Well, they've had an amazing run, haven't they? 14 games unbeaten. So what's your prediction for tonight? Um, I think we're definitely going to win. I'd say 4-0. And um, I think for the over the all tournament, we've got it. You reckon we've got the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah? And what's it going to be like for your sister walking out in front of that amazing crowd at Old um, Trafford? Well, I think it's going to be overwhelming, um, but I'm sure she'll take it on the head. Um, I think she's just excited to go again in a new, another tournament. So. Well, I know all your family will be cheering her on. Uh, have a brilliant night. I'm hoping your prediction is right. I think it might be. Thank you <laughs> no, so definitely. much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what an atmosphere. Thank you so much to you at home for all the messages of support that you have been sending in for the Lionesses. As you can see, they're dancing here. It is such a significant night, not only for the players, of course, but for everyone who has been campaigning for equality in sport of all sorts and equality on a much wider level. You cannot underestimate this moment. It is such a big moment. Any young girl watching at home now knows that she too could be a professional footballer and because they did, she can. Good night. Why do I need a shower? I've been out in the rain. The faster you go, the sooner you'll be out. You'll save water too. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hello, a very good evening to you. Disappointingly cloudy across the region today and those winds really quite strong for July, particularly out towards the coast and over higher ground. And we had a warm front coming through, so the air relatively mild, creating quite a lot of cloud around despite that beautiful summer green. It is an improvement as we head into tomorrow. Those winds will gradually ease overnight tonight. It becomes warmer and sunnier for most parts of the northwest on Thursday and then perhaps a little bit more cloud on Friday, a slightly fresher feel on Saturday before it really starts to settle down the second half of the weekend into next week. So we've been talking about this high sat to the southwest over the last few days. So weak weather fronts around that high over the next couple of days, but it is continuing to journey north and eastwards heading towards the UK. And certainly by Monday, we really start to migrate some warmer air in from the continent for the start of next week. So the temperatures certainly are on the up over the next few days. So overnight tonight, still quite a lot of cloud around, the risk of some rain and drizzle around in places and again some low cloud hugging the hills. Towards dawn though we will start to see drier and clearer conditions pushing in from the north but for most of us we're in double figures overnight tonight rural lows of around 11 celsius. 4.50 and 9.41 are your sun times for tomorrow. Quite a cloudy start for Thursday but it's all improving as the morning progresses with increasing amounts of sunshine especially into the afternoon. We've still got that northwesterly flow so it could bring a little bit more cloud around from Merseyside down perhaps towards the Cheshire Gap, so parts of Cheshire seeing a little bit more in the way of cloud as well. But temperatures will feel fairly pleasant in the sunny spells and a very similar story on Friday. A bit more cloud around that high for the end of the week, but warm in any sunshine. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hello, Summer. Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. So with high pressure building, things settling down and warming up over the next few days, it's not very good news. Grass pollen counts are on the rise. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, very high. Take care. See you soon.